Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And it is rainy and cold in Indianapolis, and so I thought, why not uh, read a couple meditations and get this weekend started off on a peaceful and serene note. Are you guys ready? Okay. So I brought out the uh, Melody Beatty books today to read. Let's check out what they have to say to us today. What the universe is speaking to us. What Melody Beatty is speaking to us. April, oh I opened it right to April 12th. April 19th, let's see what it is about today. Accepting change. Yesterday's was about freedom. Um, when did I, what was the last one that I read? Oh, I, did, I didn't read a meditation yesterday, did I? Okay, so the last one that I read was Letting Things Happen, and then I was going to do Taking Care of Ourselves, and I didn't get to that one. Okay, so let's read Freedom and Accepting Change. Let's read both of these, okay? So, Freedom, April 18th. This is from yesterday. Many of us were oppressed and victimized as children. As adults, we may continue to keep ourselves oppressed. Some of us don't recognize that caretaking and not setting boundaries will leave us feeling victimized. Some of us don't understand that thinking of ourselves as victims will leave us feeling oppressed. Some of us don't know that we hold the key to our own freedom. That key is honoring ourselves and taking care of ourselves. We can say what we mean and mean what we say. We can stop waiting for others to give us what we need and take responsibility for ourselves. When we do, the gates of freedom will swing wide, walk through. Today I will understand that I hold the key to my freedom. I will stop participating in my oppression and victimization. I will take responsibility for myself and let others do as they may. Interesting meditation. Um, you know, as somebody that grew up as, you know, as, can, I consider myself an adult child of an alcoholic and grew up being bullied and put down a lot, I very much saw myself as a victim um, for much of my life, I think. And um, this whole kind of victim mentality that this person did this to me and that person did this to me and this person did that to me. And, you know, and I talk a lot in my videos about, you know, I think many of us have this uh, desire or need inside of us to want to tell on somebody. If, if you knew what this person did to me or said to me or how they talked to me and things like that, then you might think differently, you know? Um, I think one of the hardest things for me is accepting that there are some people out there in the world that put on a facade of what they're like, you know, in front of other people that are like, oh, hi, how are you, whatever, and then can say just the most cutthroat, nasty things, you know, behind um, people's backs. And that's been something that's been really hard for me. I think for a long time, I would continue to have those people in my life and, you know, and, and, tell them what they wanted to hear and all that kind of stuff, you know? And, and one of the things that I've learned in the last couple years, I think, that has been really hard for me to almost kind of accept is that for much of my growing up years, when I was being bullied, I would almost try to seek validation from those people that didn't like me, were bullying me, were making fun of me and things like that. It was like, if I think the mentality was, I don't even know that I was aware of it. I think the mentality was, if I can get them to like me, it was really about my own self-concept and my own self-confidence, was that if I can get somebody that doesn't like me, if I can get that person that doesn't like me, doesn't want anything to do with me, makes fun of me, and thinks I'm a joke, if I can get them to like me, then I'm okay, right? And, um, you know, I think it's why often in relationships we pick people who have similar traits to how we were brought up. And uh, that there's that whole idea that if we can get in a relationship and we can kind of fix that, then that it's not really about us. It's really about how we grew up and we can change the pattern when that's really not what it's about at all, you know? And I think in the last couple of years and doing a lot of work in therapy and stuff like that, what I realized was... I'm seeking validation from people that I'm probably never going to get it from. And the reality is that there are going to be people in the world that don't like me. There are going to be people in the world that despise me. There are going to be people in the world that make fun of me. And that's okay, right? Like, it, that's okay. It's not okay that it happens, but I, I can't change it. And so I have to get to that point that, you know, when I say that's okay, it's not like I say, oh, I think that's fine. They're, they're good people because they do that. I don't think that at all. What I'm saying is... I have to get to a point of acceptance and realize that I can't change that. I can't change what other people do, think, or say. I have no power over other people, right? And I've known that for a very long time. I think, you know, I have 
pandered to certain people in my life by saying things or doing things that I think that would make them happy. I realized, you know, years ago that I was keeping people in my life that really did not care about me, that did not, um, care if I, you know, was around them, they never checked in on me, and things like that. The relationships were very much one-sided, and I was, do and, and, and the reality was, they didn't really care if I was there or not, right? And so, those were almost the people that I was giving more time and attention to than the people that actually wanted to be in my life. Um, and there were a lot of people that really wanted to be in my life, and were not toxic and were not negative and brought love and laughter and joy to my life and were right or die and were always there for me. And it was almost kind of like I took them for granted and the people that I had to work really, really hard towards to have a relationship with, I would work harder for that because if I could get validation from those people, you know, and it goes all the way back, you know, to... I think even the kind of like sick mentality of growing up as a child of an alcoholic that if I love my mom enough, you know, I, if I love my mom enough, I want to think through this thought, if I love my mom enough, then she'll quit drinking for me, right? It's one of the comments that I get from a lot of people when I talk about addiction is that, you know, the parents and spouses will reach out to me and say, well, I loved my child so much and they continue to use anyway and, and I love them so much. Don't they know that I love them? They're like, what they're doing is hurting me or spouses will say to me, you know, like I love my, you know, partner so much and they don't they know that like what they're doing is hurting me and I've said this a million times in videos right that well not a million but I've said it a couple times in videos that if love were enough there would be no need for 12-step programs maintenance programs therapy treatment you know whatever there would be no reason for that if love were enough if love were enough then you know there would be no all, all these kind of different issues the reality is love is not enough and so I think I had to change my entire mindset and get out of this victim mentality, get out of this idea of, oh, somebody did me wrong and I'm going to make it right and I'm going to prove to them that I didn't deserve that and I'm going to show, or, or I'm going to show everybody who they really are, you know, and I had to get out of that kind of like victim mentality and to the point today where... And I think, and I will say this, what I'm talking about is I'm not talking about huge issues of abusive natures and things like that. I think that those stories need to be told. Um, you know, and, and there's a lot of things I've never shared on video that I experienced growing up as a child and that those things, I, ha I there's some things I have never shared, never talked about on video, right? And even with those things, I think... Um, and have been in some abusive relationships and things like that that I've kind of hinted at. I think even with those things, it's like, okay, to tell the story and turn my wounds into wisdom and share that with somebody else and say, and you don't have to be in the same situation or you can grow from this situation is a cathartic experience rather than staying in the victim role and going, poor me, poor me. You know, in recovery, we have this kind of saying that is poor me, poor me, poor me another drink. When I put myself in that victim role, I don't gain anything from that, right? I I don't gain anything from that except for uh, you know it, it's like how sad it is that what happened to me well I don't want to be that victim for the rest of my life I don't want to continue to pity myself or have other pit people pity me I want to live life I want to experience life and if that means that I have to work cathartically through that trauma and that pain to the other side to get to the other side so that I can turn my wounds into wisdom and maybe help other people or be an example of what a lived life looks like without continuing to, you know, need to tell on somebody or try to get somebody to like me or whatever. I'm done with those days. I, I, I stopped that a long time ago trying to get people to like me. I realized there are going to be some people out there that I, that don't like me. There are some people out there that I don't like, right? And, and in all honesty, and, and I don't know that it would really matter what they did or how they changed or whatever. I don't know that it would really change my opinion. And so I know for other people out there, it's not going to change their opinion. I'm not somebody that continues to talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. I kind of like let it go. In my personal life, I'm talking about this. I kind of like let that go, right? Like I just like move on to the next thing. I don't spend a lot of time on that anymore. But that that took me a long time and in therapy and work in 12-step program and things like that and doing inventory to take a look at what my part was in that. And much of that, my part was choosing to stay stuck, choosing to stay in the negative and the misery and the trying and attempting and working so hard to get somebody to like me. Like, if I was enough, 
then this person would treat me differently. If I was enough, if I mattered, then this person would like me. If I was enough, if I mattered, if I was a good person, if I, and doing bending over backwards to try to prove that to people, right? Like if I was that, if, if I was enough, right? What, all of those questions are really about my own self-concept really doesn't have anything to do with what somebody else thinks about me or how they treat me. It really has to do with how I treat myself and what I think about myself, you know? And there, that's where I had to get to. I had to get to the point where I realized I am good enough. I am worth it. I do matter. I do deserve a good life, you know? And I deserve to be treated the way that I treat people, you know, in my personal life. I treat people well in my personal life and I deserve to be treated the same way. You know, and people in my life that treat me well, they deserve to be treated the same way. And that's what I deserve today. And I know that. I know today that I'm lovable. I know that I matter. I know that I'm worthy. And you are too. And that's really important to know that you are too. And it took me so much work to get there, you know? I love the scene in Pretty Woman when they're laying there next to each other and he says to her, you're so beautiful. And she says, the bad stuff is easier to believe. When somebody tells you something long enough, you start to believe it. So many, for so many years, ever since I was five years old, you know, forever, so many people told me I wasn't good enough in one way or another by not showing up for me, by not being there for me, by not having my back, by calling me names, by putting me down. I mean, I, you know, for years and years and years, you hear that stuff and you start to believe it. You start to believe I'm a piece of shit. I don't deserve anything good. That's just not the truth. Okay. It's just not the truth. I deserve good. You deserve good. And you deserve freedom from being a victim, okay? Like, you know, I don't want to forever be a victim. I don't forever want to be in this victim mentality of look what this person did to me and what I, that I don't I, I don't I don't prosper in that mindset, you know? I just don't. I don't prosper in that. I'm not saying that people didn't do horrible shit to me and horrible shit didn't happen in my life. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I don't want to stay in that mentality for the rest of my life. I don't prosper in that. I don't grow from that. I don't change from that. I don't enjoy life from that, right? And the reality is, when I look around me, the people that are role models to me in my life today are friends of mine or contemporaries of mine or people that I've known that have gone through a hundred times worse things than I will ever have gone through in my entire, have ever gone through in my entire life. And I've gone through some pretty horrible stuff, but they've gone through 10 times more stuff, right? And they are continuing to live their best life and turn those wounds into wisdom and help other people with their experiences. You know, I've shared this story, I think, on my vlog. I don't know if I shared it over here, but I had a friend of mine that um, had breast cancer, and when she found out, she had stage four breast cancer. And she uh, made it another seven years after her diagnosis and had a, had a double mastectomy and everything like that. And I can remember having a conversation with her one time, and, and she said something to the effect of, I said something about being a survivor, and she goes, I don't really care for that word. And I said, why not? She goes, I'm just living my life. I'm just trying to live the best life that I possibly can with the cards that I was dealt. And she was somebody that like would go to, like the doctors would constantly change treatments on her, and we should try this and we should try that and she would do everything never complained about it never once said oh my god I have to go to the doctor again or why did this happen to me or why did I get cancer or why did I get cancer and this person did and she never once said that you know she lived her best life until the very end and she was such an inspiration to me you know that take the life that you're given and make the most out of it she was so inspiring to me I think about her all the time you know I think about her all the time and um I see places that she, I mean, the last couple years of her life, she traveled a lot and her like style started changing and she wore a lot of like really like fun clothes. I can remember I said something to her about this coat. She had this camouflage coat and then the inside it was all pink and the cover was like pink. And I loved this coat, right? And it was nothing like she would have ever worn before. And she's like, I'm going to start dressing and doing the things that I want to do. She's like for years and years and years, you know, and, and I'll never forget like the first time I ever talked to her about it, like when she told me about her diagnosis, she said for the first time in my life, I can put everybody else's needs in the back, on the back burner. I can take care of myself and her taking care of herself first allowed her to be able to take care of other people at the end and she never played the victim in it never once I don't ever remember and we were close I don't ever remember her ever once saying anything like poor me I feel bad for myself and she could have she absolutely 100% could have you know and I think as a result of that she was surrounded by people that loved her so much she attracted that because she loved other people so deeply. Because she loved herself enough to give herself freedom from all of that, you know? And realize it wasn't going to do anything to sit there and feel that way, you know? 
And um, she's inspiring to me as a result of that. So great meditation. That was a really good meditation. Okay, let's read this the next one, which is accepting change. And this is today's meditation. Accepting change, April 19th. The winds of change blow through our life, sometimes gently, sometimes like a tropical storm. Yes, we have resting places. Time to adjust to another level of living. Time to get our balance. Time to enjoy the rewards. We have time to catch our breath. But change is inevitable and desirable. Sometimes when the winds of change begin to wrestle, we're not certain the change is for the better. We may call it stress or temporary condition. Certain will be restored to normal. Sometimes we resist. We tuck our head down and buck the wind, hoping that things will quickly calm down, get back to the way things were. Is it possible we're being prepared for a new normal? Change will sweep through our life as needed to take us where we're going. We can trust that our higher power has a plan in mind. Even when we don't know where the changes are leading, we can trust that the change taking place is good. The winds will take us where we need to go. Today, help me, God, to let go of my resistance to change. Help me to be open to the process. Help me, or help me be open to the process. Help me believe that the place I'll be dropped off will be better than the place where I was picked up. Help me surrender, trust, and accept, even if I don't understand. Um, interesting meditation, uh, because something that I struggled with for years and years and years. I would say, I don't like change. I cannot stand change. I am a, a creature of comfort. I like, or, you know, I, I like constant in my life. I, I like to get up and, and you, if you watch my, enough of my videos, you know, I do the same things every single day. I'm very much a person of ritual. And um, I hated change. Like the idea of like, you know, moving somewhere else, going somewhere else, even like traveling, I didn't really even enjoy it. Like I, once I got there and stuff, but like the whole process of all of it, like I would just rather not travel than do it. You know, anything that was different or change was scary to me. And I think that a lot of that probably comes from my, you know, growing up as well, that I never really knew what to expect um, from any one day going into the, I never knew what one day was gonna bring. So there was a lot of change when I was growing up. And so for me, safety and comfort equals just stability, you know? Um, but I think over time, my opinion about that has changed because the reality is change is gonna occur whether you like it or not. Things are gonna change. Life is gonna change. People are gonna come, people are gonna go. Circumstances are gonna change. Opportunities are gonna open, opportunities are gonna close. Things are gonna happen. And I think I realized that. And I think I really realized that around the time that my mom got sick, you know, because I can remember it was just like a random, my mom was doing fine. And then, you know, I got a call from my dad that she was super, super sick. And it was just like, everything went down from there. And then, you know, within three months, my mom was gone. and. Before then, it was like everything was fine, everything was normal, and then she was gone. And I think what I realized was, just in this random afternoon, your entire life can change out of nowhere, you know? And, you know, obviously other things have happened as, as since then, you know, that, um, you know, the accident happened, and then the pancreatitis happened, and it was like these huge life issues happened. I mean, the accident has forever changed my life forever, I mean, obviously changed my life and changed the lives of those people that were involved in it as well. And I couldn't control that. I think that that one thing so completely changed my whole perspective on how to look at life, right? And um, my and, and gratitude and acceptance and things like that. And I can remember for years sitting in meetings and people would bring up acceptance and they would say like, I'm really re resistant to change and I'm, you know, I, I can't accept things and whatever. I'm like, I, I, my thought was always like, what's your alternative? You know, like things are gonna happen in life. You, you What are you gonna do? Just say, no, I, I refuse to accept it. It, it just it never happened, it's not gonna happen shit's gonna happen in life. We're gonna be dealt things that we don't wanna deal with and we don't wanna handle and whatever, but that doesn't mean that it didn't happen, you know? Some things that happen in our life are gonna be horrifically traumatic. Other things that happen in our life are gonna be amazingly good, you know? And change comes in all forms. I think one thing I've learned today is to lean into change, you know? To get more excited about change instead of, being afraid of change, being afraid of what does this mean? How is this gonna, you know, whatever, you know? Today, I try to lean into it. And, um, you know, for example, my friend Tony and I, there was like a meeting that we, it's our home group meeting that we would go to regularly every single week. Well, 
Tanya's work schedule has changed a little bit, and so she can't always go to that meeting. I, two weeks ago, we went to it, but we can't always go to that meeting, and so we're trying different meetings. Well, that's not comfortable for me. I like to have a meeting, you know, whatever that I, you know, that I'm set to. It's still my home group meeting. It's still the meeting that I'm committed to, and things like that. And all my friends are at that meeting, whatever. But when we go to a new meet, a new meeting that I haven't been to, like in years, or have never been to before, that's very uncomfortable for me. But recently, Tanya will be like, do you want to try this meeting at such and such time? And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And I just try to lean into the change and think to myself, well, I don't know. I might meet the greatest friend I've never known before this meeting. Or I might hear something I need to hear. Or, you know, I just might have a different experience. I try to look at it with a positive, you know, outlook. And I can remember when I was in college, like always going into a class for the first day was terrifying to me because of growing up, like being bullied a lot growing up. And so I never knew what the first day of class was. And usually the first day of class was a lot of this, like who's in here that I have to avoid. And when I was in college, I can remember going into it and being like, okay, who am I going to meet in this class that might end up being like the greatest friend I've ever had or this new guy that I'm dating or whatever and looking into it that way. And that was really kind of like where it started for me, you know? And so today I try to, I'm not great at it, but I try to look at change and things that are happening, happening as, well, first of all, I can't change. I can't stop it. I can't change the change, you know? And so I try to just accept it and be like, okay, this is what's not just try to accept it. I do accept it and be like, this is what's happening and lean into it and enjoy it. It and embrace it, you know, and get excited about it instead of being like, oh, I'm so scared of change. I'm so scared of this, you know. Some of the greatest things that have ever happened to me in my life are because of the risks that I've taken or because I've leaned into change. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.